Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, we're going to be looking at an Apple IIc monitor, one that was sent in from a viewer as a mail call item. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, we have a package here that comes from Finn in Kendall, Indiana, it looks like. There's tape over the label, so I'm not totally sure. I had already peeled the tape off of this thing at some point. Let's see what we have in here. We have a note, and it looks like we have an Apple IIc monochrome monitor, and I see part of the tilt stand as well. Let's check out the note from Finn. It says, Dear Adrian, I've been watching your videos for quite a while and I wanted to contribute something. What I have here is an Apple IIc monitor. It should be considered non-working as I can't hear the high voltage when it's powered on. I'm hopeful that someday I'll see it in a video of yours working, but if not, then hearing an explanation of its condition. Thank you for your time and effort in your very informative entertaining videos. Sincerely, Finn. Well, very nice. Thank you very much, Finn. Yeah, it's a very, very, very yellowed monitor. I love it. So I had one of these monitors when I was a kid with my Apple IIc. It had the metal tilt stand that sort of sat on top of. This part goes under the monitor and attaches it to that metal stand and the computer goes under it. Of course, this should be kind of a very creamy white color, not this dark, dark yellow. There are things floating around inside of here, pieces, and there are some cracks in the case. Neither of those I think came from shipping here to me because the box is still totally in good shape and there was plenty of packing material around the monitor. So let's take a quick look at this on the bench, see if I can get it working. The little Apple IIc monitor from Finn. Uh, this thing, I love, what I like about this monitor is it's just so small and it has a convenient handle so it's really easy to carry around and it's very easy just to store. So I wanna fix this thing just to have it around the bench because getting another monochrome monitor from upstairs, they're bigger, they take up more space. This thing is just so small, I can just sort of stick it out of the way when I'm not using it. As we said before, it's very yellow. It has a crack in the case there, has a crack in the case here. Nothing too serious. It just means that it's never gonna be a perfect monitor, but that's fine. So let's start cracking this apart and uh, I'll see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. I'm not even gonna turn it on until I find out what's floating around inside, what loose part. Because loose parts inside monitors, not necessarily a good thing. If, uh, let's just say it's a metal part, right? That's, <laughs> that's loose. I had just loosely threaded this bottom part on here just to keep it on the bottom of the monitor, but it's not really needed because the stand is missing anyways, right? You might notice that it's very compact in here. It's very tight fit. Uh, you know, all this stuff on the top here, it's just all jammed together. And that's, that's what allows this thing to be such a small monitor. To get the monitor apart, you take the back cover off, then the top just sort of slides out and tilts out. Then you take the handle out. All right, actually, I can't take the handle out. I guess, um, I think there's a couple different versions of this monitor and the handle is definitely part of this top part. It is all together. So those two screws and these two screws on the bottom here would allow this entire top part to come off. I will have to take off the, some screws to get the contrast and the brightness knobs along with a power switch off before you can slide this off. But if you're looking at the SAMS service manual for this thing, you may find that its instructions aren't perfect because it, it was telling me to remove the handle. So here are the two screws for the contrast knob. Sorry, it's just contrast, not contrast brightness. And these two get the power switch off. Oops, and I just dropped a screw in there. That's the danger of using a non-magnetic screwdriver. This one is demagnetized. This one is magnetized. I generally try to use a demagnetized screwdriver when working on a monitor, but sometimes it's just not so easy. And you may drop screws inside of things like I just did. So you need to remember to find that. All right, so you just pull that in like that. And then this one, same thing, just pull that in like so. 
Now that screw is floating around inside. I'm gonna take this screw out here. It seems to be holding the back cover on. And does this come out yet? No, it doesn't, almost. I just had to kind of get that around the chassis. Now this has got to come out somehow. I gotta figure this out. Okay, I think this has to go down inside a little more than it was. There we go. There we have the inside of a little Apple monitor. So let's just move these back out. All right, what's floating around in here besides the screw that I dropped? First, I'm gonna pop off this heat sinky type cover here. Oh, it's not just a heat sink. <laughs> There's a full on set of parts on there. Ooh, it's relatively crusty in here, that's for sure. Crusty burger, as Dave Jones says. Okay, I am looking for things that were loose and floating around. So far, I'm not finding anything. I found a little piece of tape that fell out of here. Let me try to find that screw that I dropped. Oh, okay, there we go. Here's some of the parts that were floating around. <laughs> Got a little um, piece of the case and another piece of the case. I'm looking where those came from. Hmm, not quite sure. So far, no screw though. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, that's really crusty down in there. We got more pieces, another piece of the case. And uh, we got a label, came off something. I am gonna disconnect the neck board so it doesn't put any stress on the CRT because I seem to be bumping into it quite a bit. In fact, if I can, I'm gonna try to, can I remove the entire CRT easily? Mm, not quite. The whole thing is a little flimsy when it's not all together. There's a screw down there and there's one on the other side that holds the chassis in. I'm gonna take these screws out to get the CRT and the chassis separated because I need to take this apart further. To try to figure out where that screw went and also give this thing a little bit of a bench test. Ah, I see the screw actually, it's right there. Uh, the screw is right there. Come on. Whatever this thing is, it must be magnetic. <laughs> There's the screw. All right, so this is now disconnected. I'm just gonna pop the CRT off. I'm just gonna assume that it's discharged. Oh, <laughs> that came off very easily. And we just have to disconnect the deflection yoke. One connector there. And the other one is over here. There we go. And there should be a ground wire. And there is. And the ground wire can disconnect from the CRT neck board. Oh, and there's one more connector and that is the LED. And I'm just gonna pop it off with some needle nose. There we go. All right, this can be pulled apart. There we go. So we have one Hitachi CRT. There it is, mounted in the front chassis there. In case anyone was curious if you could install one of these white CRTs from Macintosh, that's what this one is, the answer is no. And that's because the mounting tabs on the 2C CRT face the back of the CRT, and yet on the Macintosh, they face the front of the screen. So. So on the Apple IIc monitor, this tab here is on this side. It's flipped around 180 degrees. So that would prevent me from installing this Macintosh CRT in here and getting a nice monochrome white CRT display. So it's kind of unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. I'm just gonna pop out the CRT while I'm at it. Might as well, since I'm basically there, and I'll give it a nice clean. See on the front of the CRT, there's a nice ring of schmutz there. <laughs> That's just not cleanable when you have it mounted in the chassis. So it's good if you can, while you have it out, give the front a nice clean. We can see where the plastic snapped off the front bezel, probably when this thing was dropped. Luckily it didn't break anything on the front side of it. It's just on the inside. And it's probably completely fine that those are broken bits. All right, let's take a look at this chassis here. So the first thing I'm gonna be looking for are bad solder joints, because that's a pretty common problem 
with CRTs. I'm trying to disconnect this, but it doesn't really come apart. So this is a transformer right here, line transformer, probably down to 12 volts. And then this board here is a bit of a power supply. I wanna to get to the PCB that's under this cover here, although it doesn't really seem like a cover. So I'm just gonna start taking screws out to see if I can get to it. Weird is the um, SAMS manual, which I have up on my computer screen, doesn't seem to match this at all. Completely different. So I'm just gonna have to start taking screws out till I get to the, the part I need. All right, I see the way this is supposed to come out. I need to take this back cover off here, which seems to be somehow attached to the mains input jack, and then the PCB can slide out. Okay, <laughs> all right, I got that plate off. Uh, now there's a screw right here. So I guess I gotta take the transformer off. This thing is insane. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Hope I can get this thing back together. I'm trying to slide the PCB out, it goes towards the camera. And it seems like they've put some kind of elastic down there, which is probably making this not possible to slide out. I have to kind of cut through that. And the blade of my knife just sort of fell out, fell down. Ugh, come on. There it is. That didn't work. Yeah, there's like a, a wire that's attached. There we go, I just, you have to free it up. This is the least user serviceable monitor I've ever worked on. Look at this. This thing is impossible. This is outrageous. This is absolutely outrageous. Okay, there we go. Look at that insanity. That is outrageous. This is where that, this elastic was holding down that wire that prevented it from sliding out. Okay, see if I can get this thing into some kind of a position that it can even run out of this chassis. Oh, this is crazy, look at this. Okay, so a transformer can go over here like this. Here's the power switch. All right, there we go. The whole power supply part is separated. And this is the, uh, this is the main CRT board right here. I think before I even try to power this thing up outside of crazy chassis. I'm going to just go over this with the soldering iron. <laughs> look at this, look at this, look at this. This is just, this is ridiculous. This looks like, this is terrible. Look how bad this looks. Well, I'm gonna go over this, try to find any bad solder joints on it and reflow them. I just, I can't believe how bad this looks. And this is not just from age. This is just the way it was made. So I didn't actually find any solder joints on the bottom of the PCB that look bad. So I reflowed the main culprits, which are the connectors and the flyback transformer, plus a few others that maybe were a suspect. There's a little bit of corrosion on the front part of the CRT here. We'll look at that in a second, but I just wanna try this thing out. So I have this all connected in a way that should be okay. I'm just gonna put that there, make sure nothing's touching power switches over here. The power cable is over here. The input is here, contrast knob. I have this mains input connected to my isolation transformer. So when I do connect it, I, at least there's a little bit of isolation. It should be off. Ground is connected to the CRT to the neck board. Deflection yoke is connected. Let's see what happens. Just making sure, one final check, to make sure everything is not touching. We're good to go, here we go. Power up. I don't really hear anything. Definitely not hearing any activity whatsoever on this thing. So it seems like there might be a power supply issue. I should measure the voltage coming in from the power supply. Actually, first I should just check to see if this power switch is working in case it doesn't have continuity. So we'll remove the mains input. Let's put this here. All right, that's good to go. Let's see about this power switch. 
Okay, we have continuity there, that's good. I'm gonna pull this off of the PCB here and we'll take a look at the fuse that's on here. There is a fuse down here. Well, that is good as well. There's a second fuse over here. I don't know why there are two, but there are. That is fine. Okay, I think I see the problem. Looks like this is a bridge rectifier right here. Let me zoom in on it. This right here is the bridge rectifier for the monitor. We have a diode here that's broken. That one's intact. These two are missing all together. So you're definitely not gonna get <laughs> working monitor when you don't have a bridge rectifier on the AC power supply. I'm gonna try to remedy this situation. It uses these weird ball type here, but I'm gonna have to replace it with something a little more conventional. Like something like this, this type of bridge rectifier. I happen to have a bunch of these and I'm gonna swap one of these in place of this. All right, I've installed a new bridge rectifier. There it is right there. It's one of the more modern types. I put heat shrink on all four of the wires. Plus I had these sleeves. So I slid them back up and over the pins. Looks like this motherboard here has a provision for having diodes directly on the board. I don't know why they made them external, but I did the same thing. And I used a little bit of thermal double-sided tape to stick that bridge rectifier onto this heatsink. So hopefully that helps it a little bit. Now, unfortunately this power supply wasn't on the SAMs, but I was able to figure out the wire colors without too much difficulty. So from this transformer, this is the mains input, the primary. This is the secondary, these two red wires. So I was able to just figure out which red wires were going to the bridge rectifier. And it turned out it was the two orange wires. So that would be the AC. It doesn't matter which way they're hooked up because it's AC, you could put it either way. And then for the output, there's a negative and a positive. There's a blue and a yellow wire. For the blue and the yellow, I was able to figure out which was negative and positive pretty easily because this cable here is what goes to the main PCB and it's actually labeled on the PCB here. So the brown wire is negative, orange wire is positive, and I don't know what the red wire is, probably a different voltage. And basically I was able to trace that this brown wire is connected directly to the blue wire that was on the bridge rectifier. And I think what I'm gonna do first is power this up disconnected from the main monitor and just check that I'm getting reasonable voltages out of here. I don't actually know what this should be, but you know, it's probably gonna be 12 volts and five volts, something like that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna connect this up. The main switch is off. I do still have it on the isolation transformer. I have these pins in here hooked up to the multimeter. Now, one thing to consider before I turn this on is something obviously damaged these, these diodes. Now, I'm assuming that this broke because this monitor was dropped and it was a physical shock that, that did that damage, that it wasn't an overload that blew them up. But if it was an overload that blows them up, I guess it's gonna blow up that bridge rectifier or it'll blow the fuses. But both fuses were intact, so I'm feeling that it was just physical shock that killed those diodes. So let's give it a try. So since I was getting absolutely nothing out of this, what I'm gonna do is I wanna see that the secondary on the transformer, these two red wires, is actually outputting some kind of an AC voltage when I turn the power switch on. So I'm gonna turn this on. Should be on right now. Let's see, I have this in AC. 16 volts, good, okay, that's reasonable amount. So what's happening with the bridge rectifier? Let me turn off the power, Let's see if this is really hot. No. All right, I popped the PCB out just to start looking around and I think I found at least one of the issues uh, when I was popped this out. Uh, look at this. This is from the transformer. The wire just sort of fell off. So it might have been barely attached as it is. I also removed the large capacitor that was on here because the top looks really puffy. It's hard to see, but um, it actually tests okay on the meter here. So, uh, you know, it's a 4700. We'll see what happens if I try to pop this here. <laughs> All right, so actually it's not puffy because of pressure. It just seems like it's got a cap on it that's, that's round. Because <laughs> now that it has a hole in it, it still sticks up. So this cap is probably fine, it tests fine. So I'll put that back in. But I definitely need to fix this wire that just fell off. Yeah, you're not gonna work if you got something like this going on. That's a problem. I'll wrap that wire on the little post there. You don't want to just sort of lay it next there. You want to actually hook it on. That way it gives it a little bit of strength. 
I might as well just sort of tug at everything else. Yeah, this looks like that just came right off too. So I'll fix this one while I'm at it. All right, multimeter connected to the orange and brown wire. It's set to DC. Mains are connected. Here we go. All right, we're getting 16.5 volts, which at least is something. Let's switch over to the red wire and see what we're getting there. At least it's pretty stable. That's good. I turned the power off. Let me check this bridge rectifier. It's not even warm. That's excellent. All right, red wire, 17.32 volts. Seems a bit high. There is a B plus adjustment on here, but I don't really know what this monitor should be running at. Looking at the SAMs on the computer, the layout is completely different. So I have no idea if this is the correct voltage or not. Of course, this thing is not loaded right now. So maybe it's higher than it should be. This uh, capacitor right here, the one I tested, is a 25 volt cap. So that would indicate that it's, it might be more than 12 volts on the output, maybe. It seems a bit high. I'd expect the monitor to be running off of 12 volts. Let me turn this B plus control here, see what that does. Okay, on the red wire, that doesn't do anything. And on the orange wire, 16 volts, Let's turn this down and up. Okay, you know what, that's actually doing nothing. So I wonder if there's a problem with that potentiometer. One last thing I want to do, there is an NPN transistor right here. It's marked A1355, but I was able to look that up and see that it was NPN. Luckily, it's got a connector here onto the main board, so I was able to unplug it. Let's just do a quick check. I'll use the diode check function on the multimeter. Hopefully you can see that. Just want to make sure this is not shorted. It seems fine. None of the pins were shorted together. That's what you're looking for. You should see diode drops on some of the pins, some of the directions, things like that. So yeah, it seems okay. All right, so I connected the transistor back up and it's plugged into the main board here and everything is ready for a smoke test and we may well get smoke. Just make sure nothing is touching anything else. Yep, everything is good. It's not connected to any kind of source, but I'm just looking to hear the high voltage start up. So here we go. All right, sounds like high voltage is working. I am going to connect a video cable up to this from the test generator, and let's see if we see a picture. This cable here comes from the test pattern generator. So let's just connect it up right there like that. And we'll put on some color bars. Now remember I had turned the B plus adjustment on here and it didn't seem to make a difference, but I, I think my idea was that if the power supply is not under load of the monitor, it doesn't regulate properly. That's my hunch at least. I've seen power supplies that did that before. Uh, luckily, Hitachi who made this monitor put little black marks on all the potentiometers. I see them everywhere, including the B plus one that showed the original position. So there was a little black mark on the part that doesn't rotate and a little black mark that on the part that does rotate. So I just set it back to exactly where those two black marks were aligned. And I can see them on all of these various pots around the monitor. So that's a pretty nice feature that they did. They obviously calibrated it and then they must have had a little marker that they, whoosh, and they just marked them all. So anyhow, test pattern generator is hooked up. Uh, let me rotate this a little bit so we can see the screen a bit better in the camera. And let's see what happens when I turn it on. Uh, we are not getting anything now. What happened? It was literally working and now it's not. Man. Oh, it is working. Not happily. Oh, that's weird. I just wasn't hearing the high voltage there. Let me try that one more time and just see what I'm looking at. So clearly the monitor is very unhappy. We actually see a raster here, but look at the deflection. It's all screwy, it's all wavy, it is not working. There is also something else to notice. Even though a raster is appearing on the screen, there's no actual image from my test pattern generator. So I don't think the cathode drive circuit is working at all. I'm turning the monitor off and on and I'm, I'm probing around with my multimeter and I'm trying to figure out if the contrast and the brightness knobs are actually working.
They don't appear to do anything. The picture just keeps getting brighter and brighter on its own until it just blanks out, which is probably something failing on the CRT board. All right, the power supply. We saw it powered up the screen. It seemed to display something. I even heard high voltage running a couple times. Like I could hear the static on the CRT. So full high voltage was there, but there's definitely problems on this thing. It is not regulating the voltage properly. This transformer outputs an AC voltage and after the bridge rectifier here rectifies it, it's around 16 and a half, 17 volts DC, goes through this main cap to be filtered, whatnot. And then these components are supposed to regulate it down to a B plus voltage. Although you see there are three wires here that come on this connector. Brown is ground. This orange cable, this is B plus. This is what runs the monitor. And this red wire specifically is filament voltage. Filament voltage is handled separately from B plus. It takes the rectified AC from this rectifier after it's smooth and it puts it through a large power resistor. I think it's about 27 ohms. And that goes directly to the filament on the CRT. And it does that because when you adjust the B plus, it doesn't want to adjust the filament voltage. It wants that to stay somewhat constant. Although if your line voltage fluctuates, it will go up and down a little bit. But I've spent some time looking at the circuit, checking for any components that have failed. The orange wire, which is B plus, it's just not being regulated. This potentiometer works. I can check it with my multimeter. I can see when I turn it, I get from like zero to 500 ohms. So it's definitely working, but no regulation is actually happening. This little PCB, which was mounted on the end here, I have it off because I actually ended up replacing this transistor. This here is the original transistor that was on there. And this is a PMP power transistor. And this does the bulk of the regulation. There are two more transistors on here and a Zener diode. And those in combination with that potentiometer are supposed to instruct this to regulate the B plus down to the correct voltage. Turns out that this little part is accessible on the back of a regular Apple IIc monitor if you pop the back cover off. And when measured on a working monitor, this power transistor regulates down to about 10.3 or 10.4 volts. That's the B plus for the Apple IIc monitor. So it got way more voltage than it should have. Incidentally, I figured out that this original transistor was bad by using my tester here. And look what happens when I test it. Takes a long time for some reason. And then it shows two diodes away from each other, which is not how a PMP transistor should read on here. And checking the data sheet on this, this is definitely a regular PMP transistor. So I think this had failed in addition to some of the other problems on here. And that's what caused the issue. So I went into my parts bin and I just temporarily found this part here, which is another PMP power transistor. It has the same pinout even as this one. Although um, the legs were shorter because I took it off another PCB, so I couldn't fold it down. Unfortunately, there are other faults on here and I can't figure out what they are because with this in here, or even if I unplug it, because you can actually disconnect this from the board entirely, it outputs about 15 volts on the orange wire here and the knob still does nothing. But that makes sense because with this PMP transistor removed, the main source of regulation is gone. Unfortunately, plugging this back in, it doesn't work. I spent a couple hours looking for the schematics for the Hitachi Apple IIc monitor, and I was having no luck finding it. The schematics that are commonly available are a SAMS computer facts document, and that is for a completely different monitor. It looks the same on the outside, but the internal circuitry is completely different. I think this is like an early revision. I'm not exactly sure, but it's made by Hitachi, and I just can't find any mention of this in a schematic form other than people saying online that they have this monitor and they're looking for schematics as well. Now it is possible to reverse engineer circuits like this. You take pictures of the boards front and back, mark down all the components and actually figure out how the circuit works. That goes a long way in helping you figure out how to fix the circuit. Unfortunately, analog power supplies like this, it definitely outside of my wheelhouse and without schematics, it will be a very tall order for me to fix this. And on top of that, if I knew that the monitor worked perfectly and it just needed a fix here, then I would definitely probably invest the time. Well, unfortunately, I know that the monitor itself also has faults. So even if I fix this, there are problems on that. So let's talk about the monitor now. We saw that this did actually power up and show some raster for a little while, but it was getting very bright Clearly something was wrong. 
And yes, the power supply was putting out way too much B plus voltage. Something is wrong with the power supply, so I decided to just put it outside for now, and I can power this thing directly from the benchtop power supply. First thing I did was take the multimeter and start looking for any components on here that looked like they were bad. Several of these diodes on here are the same type that were on the bridge rectifier, those glass bead ones, and they look pretty bad. And I actually found, I think, two diodes right here and right here that weren't working. And I found one resistor that was bad as well, that one there. So I replaced those and I powered this up and then I started hearing a hissing sound and the thing was not starting properly. And sure enough, the hissing sound came from this capacitor right here, which was there on the board. And you may notice it looks a little bit wet. And yep, this thing was actively squirting out its electrolyte. So I'm assuming that this thing is dead. This section of the board is clearly the horizontal drive for the display. And this is where the deflection yoke horizontal hooks up. And uh, there are some high power, a high power transistor right there and these capacitors. So this little section right here with these transistors probably creates the horizontal oscillator. Without the horizontal oscillator running, you're not gonna get high voltage. And this capacitor, which is just a 47 microfarad, 16 volt, it's probably necessary as part of that circuit. And I didn't show this, but when I was powering this thing up off the bench power supply, I wasn't getting any high voltage at all. The oscillator was not running. So I'm gonna say that that was the problem over there. So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit and pop a new cap in there. And we'll just see if any high voltage is generated by this because after that little testing when the B plus was over voltaging, there has not been any more high voltage out of this monitor since. All right, ready for testing. I'm really not holding out hope, but here we go. No. High voltage anode flew off. All right, here we go again. So it's drawing about 300 milliamps or so, but definitely it's not running. I don't see any high voltage. Now I don't have the filament powered up on the CRT, so there won't be an image no matter what. Well, I think I figured out what killed the capacitor the one I just took out and replaced. I have the new capacitor installed correctly according to the markings on the board, but when I power up this board and I give it about 10.5 volts, I find the positive 10.5 on the minus part of the capacitor and the positive has nothing. So I'm not sure if this is kind of part of an oscillator that normally the polarity is not backwards like this, but as it sits right now, it is getting fed backwards. Unfortunately, I think at this point, I am gonna call it on this monitor. It's too much of a basket case. There definitely seems to be quite a few things wrong with it, both the power supply and on this board. And because I don't have the schematics, there's really no way for me to know how I need to replace components on this. Specifically, like I put some new diodes on here that the diodes definitely were open. They weren't shorter, they were open but I didn't know what kind of diodes they are. I just replaced them with standard high current diodes, but definitely I don't know exactly what diodes they should be. And there's probably other faults on here too. There's just a good amount of corrosion on this board for whatever reason. And I think that has caused numerous components to fail on here. Not to mention running this at excessively high voltage around 16 volts when this thing should be running, as far as I'm aware, around 10 and a half volts, may have caused other damage on the board. This is after the fact. But definitely there were already failed components on here before I even powered it up. I did do some checking before I powered this up at all, and I found multiple components that were open, like a resistor and those two diodes. Fortunately for me, I have another Apple IIc monitor, which does work perfectly. It's in great physical, cosmetic, and working operation too. So this can actually be a spare parts board for that, like this flyback transformer. I may end up just desoldering this because I'm pretty sure this works fine and it can be a spare flyback. So if the flyback in my IIc uh, monitor ever breaks, well, I have another one to fall back on. Not to mention it's the same monitor as this. So some of these other parts 
may be good as well. Like there's a little transformer here. When these die, it can be very hard to find replacements. So a good spare part. There is one more thing I want to set up and do on this video before I call it quits. So let me get set up. Here's the Apple IIc monitor CRT. I have removed the deflection yoke. This is it right here. This is the one that was originally on that monitor. It's kind of interesting. It's got an extra coil here. These adjustment magnets made by Hitachi. This here is a Macintosh Classic CRT driver board, analog board slash power supply. And in this bag right here is a Macintosh Classic motherboard. One of the ones I've recapped. I wanted to hook up this CRT to the Macintosh so we have a green Macintosh. Let's give it a try. All right, we're ready for testing. Here is the power cord, and this is plugged into the isolation transformer. Just as an FYI, we have the motherboard connected right here. The monitor is connected. The ground strap is on this corner right here. It's I have the CRT flipped around from the way it normally is on a Mac monitor. Are we ready to see a classic Mac image on a green CRT? Let's go. High voltage is running. I can hear it. Okay, I have the deflection yoke turned um, 90 degrees. <laughs> Let's just, let me just fix that really quick. Okay, are we ready for try number two? Here we go. High voltage is running. Thumbs up to that. Where's that beautiful green picture? There it is. Oh, it's still a little slanted. Aha, look at that. I just love it. That looks so cool. Let's just twist the flexion yoke. I do have to loosen the screw a little bit. That's a wonderful green image. I love it. Let me hook up a keyboard so it can boot into an OS. Just take a look at that. That just looks so strange to see, but I kind of love it. I know people have a soft spot in their heart for the amber display, but I also love the green phosphor. And I think this just looks wonderful. This is a good, strong CRT. So I'm glad to have this, even though the rest of the monitor is not good. The fact that I have an extra spare nine inch green CRT is fantastic. If it weren't for these incompatible mounting ears on this CRT versus the ones that are in the Macs, I would absolutely pop this into one of my Macintosh classics and really throw people for a loop when I plonk that down on the table and give it a power up. I mean, how many people have seen this? I certainly have never seen a Macintosh personally that had anything but a white CRT in it. So thank you very much, Finn, for sending in this Apple IIc monitor. I have loosely reassembled the case simply to hold the nice, strong green CRT. The rest of the guts are not in here. I've put those in my spare parts bin if I ever need things like the flyback or any other parts to fix another IIc monitor. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm sorry I couldn't fix it. But if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know all that youtube stuff and subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. And I want everyone to stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.